Ron Wade again with IDT. Uh, today, in this little episode, we're going to talk about PCI Express common clocking and its uh, impact on the uh, timing solutions that you would use in the system. So, as the name implies, common clocking uh, says that all of the clocks come from one source. In this case, it's a PLL. It may be spreading, it may not. But very seldom um, do you get all of your clocks from one device, so you need some sort of fan out. Uh, buffers to distribute extra copies of the PCI Express clocks. And while it's still a common clock, now we have to take into account whether we're using spread spectrum or whether we're using uh, non-spread spectrum. If we are not using SSC, then we can fan out to these buffers here, and this could be a ZDB with a PLL inside, or it can be a fan out buffer, or it can be a part where you select between the two. Without spread spectrum, I can put this buffer in PLL mode or ZDB mode, it doesn't really matter, and I don't violate the common clock uh, requirement for, from the PCI Express SIG. Same with this guy, it can be a fan out buffer or um, a PLL ZDB, it doesn't really matter. Things get really interesting though, when spread spectrum is in use. When spread spectrum is in use, then I have to have, this, this is my common clock. With spread spectrum in use, these have to be in a fan out buffer mode. They cannot be used in PLL mode. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The simplest reason is that if this were a PLL ZDB and it is tracking the spread, there will always be some tracking error, which means that as the input clock goes like this, the output clock is gonna overshoot it and go down like that. It's just the nature of having a PLL with a finite bandwidth. So you have tracking error here, and the tracking error will cause uh, this to, to uh, fall out of the PCI Express PPM limitations of uh, uh, plus 5300 to minus 5300 when you're using a half percent downspread clock. So with SSC, you have your spread spectrum clock generator, but any fan out buffering, any buffering at all, has to be a fan out buffer without a PLL. That's a limitation on the um, architecture. So the other point I'd like to make is as far as the jitter is concerned, the uh, because we're using a common clock here, it's assumed that the, the, the jitter on both sides for the clock is the same, and all we have to do is take the, uh, the difference function, so minus sign, the difference between the CPU and the transmitter, uh, CPU transmitter, say in the IO storage receiver, to calculate our jitter. That'll be more important when we get to the separate clocking in a future video.